Our reason for this award scheme is simply to enhance competition among our members. The fact is that you look at the line of business, it's the same for everybody. But I wanted to find out who are those making the difference in terms of giving us unique products, unique services to the clients that we have. And so in our quest to find out, we decided let's come out with an award scheme where we'll ask our people to compete based on the numbers that they turn out. And based on their performance, we'll be able to select a few of them and award them on an annual basis. Now, in, the, in this context, the financial institutions that operate within the non-bank financial sector. Now, in Ghana, when we talk about the non-bank financial sector, it's all the financial institutions, with the exception of the commercial banks or the universal banks that we have. So, in between us, when you take from savings and loan down to the individual social collectors, we have seven different groups. And among them, we have 1,970 um, institutions. Majority of them are the enterprises, which are the SUSU and the micro credit. But we also have the rural banks, the savings and loans, microfinance companies, the financial NGOs, and then um, the microfinance companies, as well as the credit unions. So these institutions come together to form this group called Gramfin. And among us, we are doing this award. Well, our studies that we've conducted so far, the first two that we've done, indicates that most of them who awarded, who got awarded last, um, the previous ones, are now increasing in terms of numbers of clients, in terms of uh, margins they are making on their, on their loans. They are, they are doing very well. Um, if you pick a typical institution, like some of the Susus in the water region, for instance, some say they can do as much as two million dollars, uh, two million Ghana cities in a week as mobilization. Before this, they were doing around 1.2 million, and for me, that is remarkable. And in terms of the numbers, they've increased the numbers of uh, their members as as um, as Susu um, depositors dramatically. And for us, if this continues this way, we do hope that within the next few years, we will increase the bracket of financial inclusion in this country. Um, I think it's, it's a general issue that we all say, you know, with the advent of technology, a lot of people are hiding somewhere doing their business as well. So what we're trying to do is that we are embarking on massive financial literacy education. But we've started already, we've done about two regions already. And the, the way we are doing it is that more or less it's house to house. Apart from gathering people and then talking to them, we are also moving in the communities to let people know that before you engage in any financial activities, understand that the institution that you are dealing with is a licensed institution. The fact is that if you don't check and you deal with anybody who more or less is um, on, on the internet and doing their own stuff, but you don't know where they are, you don't know their source and you are dealing with them, you do that at your own risk. And so we have done a lot of work on that. Now on top of it, there are also surveillance that we are doing. We've asked our people to reform us whenever you see a new activity emerging. Just tell us somebody is organizing this financial activity here. Who will take the trouble on us to do our own investigation to find out whether they are licensed institutions or not. Because, to be honest with you, it's not everybody that is part of these associations. There are some new ones that are not members of the associations. And, and so even though we encourage everybody to be there, you cannot get 100%. So those ones that are not members of us, we want to make sure they are doing the right thing. And, and we are on the lookout every time to make sure that all these ones are either registered with a, a known association or get license from the central bank before you do the business. So that's what we are doing. But we also entreat the communities to get involved. As district, as a small town, whatever happens within your space, be aware of it, know who they are, find out what they are doing. If it's in the right mode, let them operate. If not, inform the appropriate authorities to take charge of those things. So we all have to be part and parcel of it so that we can all take charge of um, whatever is happening. Other than that, if you leave it to, in the hands of a few people, 
before we we get there to check on it they might have duped people and go away with it we don't want to do uh, we don't want to see those things happening so we all have to be on our guard